Touching every life, I worship you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We have come into the house of worship this morning to give God some praise, to give him some glory, to give him all the honor. If you are able to stand, please stand at this time. Let us pray. All wise and almighty God, we come before you this morning, giving you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. For you are worthy, Father. Lord God, we thank you, Father, for allowing us to be in our right minds this morning, to have our health and our strength. Father God, as we come this morning to worship you and to honor you, Father, we ask that you would open up our hearts, open up our minds, dear Lord, open up our vocal cords that we may sing the songs of Zion unto you and give you all the praise. 
Lord God, we thank you, we honor you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Left for weak, say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, let the weak Say I am strong, let the poor say I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. You ought to give thanks, give thanks. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. Please stand and join the choir as they sing the intro, Magnify the Lord.
everybody, bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank, thank you for waking us alive and down yesterday. Thank you for our sins, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be here throughout this storm of water. And in Jesus Christ, now pray, amen. Sponsored reading will be done by Trustee Michael Sams, 561. Please join the choir as he sings the hymn number, Down at the Cross, 191. Good morning, church. Good morning. Responsive reading will be from number 561, Christian Living, which is from Malachi, chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, one through, verses 1 through 3, and 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 5, and chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. I will read the lead, and uh, you will read the choir, I mean the audience. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? in the tithes and the offerings. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there be, may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there will not be room enough to receive it. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing it up as he may prosper, that there may there be no collections when I come. Moreover, brethren, we, may, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing. And not only as we had hope, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. All together, so let each one give it as he has prospered. By virtually or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen.
sit down. <laughs> we will now have the Youth Hour by Brother Travis Clark, followed by morning annou um, announcements and recognition of visitors by Brother Jose Nambi and Pastoral Comments from Pastor Newkirk. Good morning, Oak City. Can the youth please stand and sing their theme song? City, I'm back again. Um, after my last message, uh, a gentleman in the church told me I needed to um, throw some jokes in there because I had tears and, and, and stuff flowing last time with my message. Um, I'm still a work in progress. I'm a little, little more Steve Harvey with my jokes than I am uh, Art Three. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll save the jokes. Um, and please bear with me because uh, I signed up for uh, this youth message about, about a month ago. And I had everything planned. This is what I'm going to talk about this week. All of that got thrown out. It didn't, it didn't feel right. So, um, I have a few points right here that I'm gonna hit on, um, and then I'll be out of the way. Um, youth, you must be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you wanna become. That means sometimes putting away or putting things behind you, um, friends, habits, uh, tendencies, to become a better person. Um, something else that you should remember, pain is temporary. It may last an hour, it may last a day, maybe even a year, but eventually it will subside. 
and it'll be replaced with something bigger and better. But if you quit, that lasts forever. Um, this message right here is actually for the entire church. Um, stop making food for people who are only getting to go plates. A lot of people in your lives are takers. They have nothing to contribute. All they do is take, take, take. They don't even have the decency to say hello or thank you. Get away from toxic people. Unfortunately, sometimes it's friends, it's family, people you don't even know. But you gotta get away from those takers. Um, finally, you can't bless others when you're spiritually broken yourself. Um, God is going to keep providing for you. He's going to keep helping you get over that next hump. But when you aren't listening to him, when you aren't focused, when you don't pray, when you don't read your Bible, you're spiritually broken. And you can't see that coming. As many of y'all know from my past youth messages and my story of my journey, I was spiritually broken. I missed all the signs. I missed all the blessings. Had to turn my life around. I had to pray. Had to get in the Bible. I had to consult with people who were further along in their journey than I was. So youth, when it comes to your walk with God, school, the next step you're going to take in your lives, talk to somebody who's a little further along in their journey. That's the only way you're going to get there. My father used to tell me, if you want to know how to get to 30, want to know how to get to 40, want to know how to get to 50, I can tell you how to do that. You want to know how to get to 60, 70, 80? You got to talk to somebody that's been there. Thank you, youth. Thank you, church. Good morning. Before I begin the announcements for today, I would like to recognize our visitors. If you're a visitor, please stand and give your name, church affiliation if you have one, and tell us who invited you to Oak City today. And please wait for an usher to give you a mic before you begin. Good morning, Saints. It's a blessing to be here. This is my wife, Maria. Pastor Maria and Pastor Melvin Ross from Sacramento, California. And we're here visiting my dear, lovely cousin, Barbara. So it's an honor and a great pleasure to be here. Greetings we're from West Sacramento Community Church. Praise God that he allowed us to be here in Raleigh, North Carolina, to be able to worship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. That is a blessing. So thank you for blessing our souls as we continue to worship in spirit and in truth with all of you. We love you. Uh, good morning. My name is John White. I'm here with my dad, who's uh, recently just relocated here to Raleigh from Washington State. So this is John Sr., John the Third, and I'm John Jr. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, this is the day that the Lord has made and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Stacy Peacock and I'm visiting this morning with Travis Clark. 
On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. William T. Newkirk and the Oak City family, we welcome you and invite you to come back soon. Oak City, please give our visitors a round of applause. These are the announcements for Sunday, October 20th, 2019. I would not read all the announcements in the bulletin, so please govern yourselves accordingly. Please join us for a prayer meeting, Bible study, and Awana on Wednesday, October 23rd at 6.30 p.m. The devotional leaders are the homecoming committee. The Bible study lesson is the Book of Lamentations. Meetings to be held today following morning worship service. The men's ministry is asking that all men who signed up for the book, Quiet Strength, please meet in the library after worship service for more material and for issuing the books to those that have not received them yet. Oak City Baptist Church 154th Homecoming and Church Anniversary on Sunday, October 27th, 2019. The theme, Let God's Glory Shine in You, from taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Join us at 1045 a.m. as we worship and praise God for the favor and blessings he continues to pour into the life and legacy of Oak City. Oak City Baptist Church Veteran Ministry presents Veteran Day Forum 2019 on November 9th, 2019, between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Topics of the day, history of the Triple Nichols, 555, paratroopers, Buffalo Soldier Troopers, experience of an African-American in military late 1950s to middle 1960s, the benefits of student participation in JROTC and ROTC, discussion on veteran administration claim process and your responsibility, identifiable presumptive conditions from various war or conflict areas such as World War II, Korean War, Vietnam, Desert Storm, and other frontiers. Veteran Administration Healthcare System and Changes. Open mic on from attendees on veteran issues and concerns. We welcome veterans, their dependents, and eligible youth for JROTC or ROTC. Contact Oak City Baptist Church Administration Office at 919-839-5869 or James Samuel at 919-247-6888. For details and to RSVP, Oak City Baptist Veteran Committee. The youth ministry is hosting a youth lock in on February, November 1st from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. This overnight event is for all youth and is free. There will be games, food, crafts, food, and more. Invite a friend. The overnight lock in will conclude with breakfast on Saturday morning. Parents, please plan to drop off your youth on Friday, November 1st, between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. And please plan to pick them up no later than 7 a.m. the next day. <laughs> youth are encouraged to bring sleeping bags, blankets, and pillows. Please sign up by Sunday, October 27th in the administrative office if you plan to attend. Thank you. Deacon Small's Family Life Ministry will take a group photo today after church service. Thanks. Deacon Tucker's Family Life Ministry will also take pictures immediately after worship service in front of the altar. Thank you. The Homecoming Committee will like to present the September standings for this year's Spirit Award Challenge, so please turn your attention to the screens.
Finally, please let us remember our known sick and shut in. Remember them with our cards, calls, visits, but most of all with our prayers. These are the announcements for today. Thank you and have a blessed week. All right, no intimidation right here, Sister Taylor. <laughs> you need to stop trying to intimidate <laughs> our Carolina people. <laughs> I should speak a lot of those waiting to come in. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. We honor our, God, honor our God today and thank him for this another worship day, another time to come to give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. We honor our worship leader, one of our students, Levi Pettis. Let's give Levi a big hand. We honor my fellow clergy uh, here at Oak City and also any visiting clergy, we honor you. Uh, we honor our deacons and other leaders. Beloved church family, we honor you. And to our visiting friends, we certainly honor you. We thank God for this another day to come and fellowship and worship together. We thank God for what's happened already. I, I do want to say to our visiting friends, uh, we are blessed by your presence, all the way from Sacramento. Praise God. We thank God for you. Did you say a pastor? Praise the Lord. We happen to have a visiting pastor with us and others who are in the ministry as you're on the battlefield for the Lord. And to the uh, family of John number one, John number two, and John number three, <laughs> God bless you. So happy to have all of you with us. It's good to see Kevin back there. Kevin, it's good to see you. Praise the Lord. All right. Kevin three, down in Florida, where he's working full time after graduating college with his master's. <laughs> Also, uh, Sister Peacock, it's that good to have you. Praise the Lord. And uh, others who are here, uh, I didn't get all the names, but thank you for coming. Those even elected not to stand, we thank God that you're here as well. And let me say to uh, Travis, uh, Travis Clark, one of our young adults, uh, thank you for that profound message. Uh, yes. Uh, points of wisdom points of wisdom, and also a personal testimony. There's nothing quite like a personal testimony to help somebody, because somebody's got going down that same road uh, that you may have gone down, and that personal testimony is a blessing. So we thank you for that inspirational message this morning to our youth. Again, uh, you heard the homecoming announcement. Uh, and uh, I don't know who's playing that piano. Is that you, Patrick, playing the piano? <laughs> All right, somebody's playing the piano with the background. Uh, we uh, certainly look forward to next Sunday as we celebrate our church birthday and our homecoming. Please invite your family and friends, your neighbors, to come and fellowship with us. And uh, we will be having dinner after service on next Sunday. So if you've got a large group coming now, be sure to let the homecoming committee know because they've got to estimate how many people to feed on next Sunday, and that's always difficult to do uh, because you never know who's going to show up. But let us come. Uh, we got kicked off on this past Friday night with another pasta dinner by the homecoming committee. Uh, we had a wonderful time, pasta and tossed salad and all the trimmings. I want to thank the homecoming committee. Sister Gillian Fields is our chairperson and all of those who serve with her on the homecoming committee. Uh, and then we had a wonderful Friday night service, praise and worship service. Uh, our speaker was uh, Reverend Dr. Jean Brown, and she preached from the book of Joshua, chapter 9, verses 16 through 27, talking about be wise or you can be deceived. Praise the Lord. And if you missed it, she talked about the deception of Satan, how he deceives so many people, and how we need to start seeking God in prayer. Otherwise, we can certainly be deceived. And she used the story of the Gibeonites in the Bible, the Old Testament, how the Gibeonites uh, hoodwinked uh, 
Israel and the people of God and how it costs them mightily. So we need to always seek God's counsel before making our decisions. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Let's give her a hand for a nice message on Friday night. I see our colleges are well represented today. Today is a day for school colors and showing your stuff for whatever college you may have attended and uh, just wearing your t-shirts, your sweatshirts, and I see you got a shawl and other paraphernalia, praise the Lord, <laughs> for those who have gone to uh, further your education. You look good, you look good. And I don't know why all the students are sitting up front, but I like it, I like it. I, it's good to see you all sitting up front today. All of our young people, yeah, they're part of a dance ministry, I know, and they're part of our youth ministry, so it's good to see them sitting up front uh, and sitting together. It speaks volumes. Speaking volumes is something I like to see, and we're so proud of you, so proud of you. On yesterday, uh, we had a women's ministry uh, retreat, uh, part of a group of sessions they're having and they had a guest speaker to come in on yesterday Reverend Colette Parker from First Baptist Zebulon she talked about purpose purpose and it was a great session on yesterday 22 of our women were there and we thank God for the leadership of our women's ministry Deaconess Priscilla Batts and those who work with her and serve with her we just want to say we applaud you for what you're doing in ministry and how you are moving forward. Also on yesterday, we had an Awana conference in Nightdale, North Carolina. It was a regional conference. It may have been statewide because we had people from Wilmington, uh, Fedville, and all other areas, Cary, Apex. Uh, we were there from Oak City. In fact, six of our Awana teachers and leaders were there on yesterday, and I was there. Uh, to also take in the sessions and to be a part of what happened on yesterday. I want to ask those who were there yesterday, please stand. Sister Monia Lindsay and Sister Karen Jones, Sister Glenda Sandlin, Sister Oral McLean, Sister Jane Campbell, and Sister Whitney Battle. All right, you may be seated. We thank them for going and learning more, yes learning more about what's happening in the area of Awana. And for those of you who may not know what Awana is, it's a Bible study curriculum for youth, uh, children and youth. And it talks about uh, the prayer for them is that all youth and children throughout the world will come to know, love, and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have a great Awana program that we started in March of this year, and uh, we all to another year starting in September. We have had as many as 30 some odd students coming in one session. We average about 25 per night. And it's all ages, from ages two I believe up to uh, 18 or when you're a senior in high school. And I want to thank our leadership, uh, Sister Lindsay and our uh, assistant chair, Sister Erica Johnson, and all those who do other things with the WANA. They have people assigned for different things and also teachers. So yesterday was a great day. Um, and by the way, the theme for yesterday is look hope in the eyes. Look hope, H-O-P-E, in the eyes. And it talked about how Awana provides hope for children and youth by sharing the Lord Jesus Christ with them. Also, Sister Lindsay had a chance to give a short version of what we have here at Oak City to the whole conference. She's able to give a uh, testimony on how we have our program set up and how it's benefited our youth. Made her very proud, very proud. October is Breast Cancer Month. Most of us know that because the month is almost over. We had a person in the church who uh, was part of a team to uh, raise money for breast cancer. On yesterday, they had a 5K walk about 25 of our people were there. I saw pictures that they had of, of those who were there. And uh, Sister Mary Austin uh, was on a team that raised over $3,200. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Praise the Lord. And there were 33 people on her team, but on her team here at Oak City, she had 25 of us from Oak City and other friends that she had to come from different places. In fact, she had friends who came yesterday from Jacksonville, Florida, uh, from New York, from Danville, Virginia, and from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Josh, Josh Powell, who played, I think, basketball or football over at NC State, he was there. And another athlete was there as well to be a part of her team. So congratulations to Sister Austin in her absence. And congratulations. She is? Oh, didn't know you were here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I normally see her ushering, but I guess she's not ushering today. Well, congratulations, Sister Austin. Let's give her a big, big hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Congratulations. All right. Also on yesterday, Reverend Cassandra Stone, one of our associate ministers here at Oak City, and our music uh, plays for our two of our three of our choirs, the Youth Choir, the Celebration Choir, and the Voices of Oak City. Uh, she is also the music director for our Wake Missionary Baptist Association. Our association has 50 churches, and she has uh, volunteered to help those churches improve their music ministries. On yesterday, she did a workshop over at First Baptist Zebulon, and five different churches were there represented to be a part of that training. And um, I was impressed with a theme that she had uh, as part of her training, and I have a training packet here, that singing in the choir is cheaper than therapy. <laughs> singing in a choir is cheaper than therapy. It's healthier than drinking, and it's more fun than working out. <laughs> Everything is more fun than working out, though. <laughs> but congratulations to Reverend Stone, how she volunteers her time. She does that without compensation. When you are a servant in the Wake Association and churches call upon you to do something for them, uh, we cannot take uh, monetary uh, compensation for it. Uh, now, if you go and you are not representing the association, then they can provide something for you. But if you're representing the association, you cannot be paid for it. At least you can't ask for payment for it. And most of them will not give it either. <laughs> uh, but Reverend Stone is also going to be helping uh, New Providence uh, Baptist Church. They will be having a women's retreat coming up on November 2nd. And she will be providing the music for them at this women's ministry retreat. It'll be conducted by evangelist Dr. Hattie Lofton, and it's called Capturing Our Portion. And again, this is from 8.30 uh, until, well, I don't have the ending time, but it starts at 9 o'clock, and she will provide the music for them. She's also providing music for a women's conference, the 35th Annual uh, Women's Convention Conference uh, here in Raleigh that is led by Reverend Dr. Mary Heggie. Uh, some of the speakers will be Dr. David Forbes, Reverend Paul Anderson, and Reverend George, George Cromwell. And again, Reverend Stone is providing the music. Reverend Stone, let's give you a bow, give her a hand. Praise the Lord. I don't know how she finds all the time to keep doing all she does, but she does. Praise the Lord. Mrs. Hook also uh, received the recognition on yesterday. I want to recognize her and a couple other people. On yesterday, the Raleigh City Missionary Union had their Missionary Training Institute, and it was entitled, the theme was God's Power to Help a Hurting People. The facilitator was our Executive Secretary of the Women's Baptist Home and Foreign Missionary of North Carolina. Uh, that person is Minister Tracy Ross. And on yesterday, uh, Mrs. Hooker was given a certificate, uh, a leadership certificate by the Women, Women's Baptist Home and Foreign Missionary Convention of North Carolina, which is an auxiliary to our General Baptist State Convention that we are part of. The theme is God's Power to Help Hurting People, and again, it's signed by the president of our convention, Dr. Leonza Lynch, and about four or five other people who are leaders of the Women's, Women's Baptist Home Missionary Group. Let's give Mrs. Hooker a hand who's here today. 
Chloe. Where is Chloe? Chloe, please stand. Is Chloe here? Well, I know she's probably on her way. Chloe was baptized this morning, but I wanted you to know she also received her report card, and she has all A's and a couple of B's. Uh, she's in the eighth grade over at Daniels Middle School. And give Chloe a hand in her absence. <laughs> Tatiana, will you please stand? Tatiana is also uh, in middle school or elementary. She's in elementary school. She was elected to be a member of the student council at her school. Give Tatiana a hand. <laughs> that means you're one of the student leaders on your campus. Praise the Lord, and you also got to be a good student. Everybody can't serve on the student council. So congratulations, Tatiana. Keep up the good work. Finally, on the prayer list, we have several names. I won't call them all, but we are praying for Deacon Douglas, who's ushering this morning. Reverend Michael Pope is in the male chorus. Sister Ruby Green, who's here today. It's good to see her. Sister Virginia Brown, who's here today. We're lifting up Brother Robert Jones, Sister Elaine Grisby, Sister Monica Bond, uh, Sister Faye Moore, who's here today, uh, wearing her A&T attire, and uh, Brother Rodney Melvins, uh, Trustee Dennis Peoples, who's here today, uh, still recovering, Sister Verdi Ray, I don't think she's here today, and Sister Mary Winston. Sister Ray, by the way, cannot drive until November, so... That's why you don't see her as much, because she still has trouble with her, from her surgery, uh, rotator cuff uh, surgery. Uh, Non-members we're lifting up include a long list that I won't call. I just mentioned, be in prayer for all of them as we pray. Uh, remember others who are less fortunate than we are. The birthdays are listed in the bulletin for this week. Uh, Brother James McLean has a birthday on the 23rd. He's our sound engineer, praise the Lord. And also, did I say something wrong? <laughs> oh, it's picture went up. Oh, okay. Y'all gotta start telling me things. <laughs> People start laughing, I'm thinking they're laughing at me. <laughs> All right, Brother Billy Sams is also a birthday on the 23rd. He's the son, of course, of Sister Lulie Fleming. And Sister Arlene Williams has a birthday on the 23rd. And on the 24th, Marcia Lindsay has a birthday. Uh, Marcia, of course, is uh, the oldest child of the Lindsay family. And one anniversary, Brother George, who's in the choir, and Sister Deborah Birch. Y'all please stand. Sister Birch is sporting her shawl attire. <laughs> Brother Birch, which one is this? 40. Number 40, give them a big, big hand. 40 years. My, 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 you got to go in your pocket this year. <laughs> 40 years. Congratulations. Congratulations. I have another announcement to make, but I'm not going to do it till next Sunday. So come back. Very important one. Come back and you'll hear it next Sunday. God bless you. Uh, Lord's tithing offering. We will now have um, honor the Lord by giving our tithes and offering. Offertory prayer will be given by Trustee Daniel Moore. Afterward, the choir will favor us with offertory selection. Offertory prayer by Trustee Daniel Moore. Chorus response, male chorus. Please stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness and your continued blessing upon these, your people. Heavenly Father, we also thank you for this opportunity to give back a small portion of that which you have provided to us. May it be used for the advancement of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
understand all things come of thee. Holy, holy, Please be seated for a few minutes before we continue with our scripture reading, and then I'll ask Levi to come back for that. I want to just recognize one of our youth who's here this morning, uh, who has gone through uh, a traumatic time because of uh, some things that happened in her school and things that happened as a result of students in her school and probably some other schools as well. Uh, I'm talking about Shania Edwards. Uh, Shania is here this morning with her family. Uh, she has had to confront the students who had a racist chat group, a racist chat group. And they were saying things about people of color in a derogatory way. One of Shania's white friends told her about it. So Shania became a part of the group. They didn't know she was black. And she heard directly some of the things they were saying. As a result, uh, she confronted the principal and others in the school to say, what are you going to do about it? Nothing was done. They figured they could hide behind policy that says it's, it's a Family Pri Privacy Rights Act and we can't do anything about it because no names were called and it was not directed at any one person. It was just general talk. Well, uh, Shania and her family did not rest with that answer. They had a press conference that was held led by a young man named Kevin Pittman, and uh, others participated in the press conference. And after the press conference, that the news media came and put it on, the, on television, uh, they met with the school board uh, on a Tuesday night, uh, this past Tuesday, a week ago, I'm not sure now, but they were there to talk about this issue with the school board. And uh, the school board was very apologetic of what happened but did not give any solutions or any uh, recommendations on what they would do about it. They simply said they regretted what happened. They felt that uh, they felt for Shania, but they didn't say they would do anything to provide consequences in the future for students who do that. So uh, they are still uh, having to deal with this issue. But I just want to say how proud we are of her courage the courage of Shania for confronting these students who were propagating racist dialogue, racist chat on a chat group. Stand up, Shania. This is a young lady right here, freshman in high school. Yeah, we're proud of you. Proud of you. Praise the Lord. Uh, she's a freshman at East Wake High School and uh, a very intelligent young woman and a lot of courage. Always stand your ground when you're right. Always stay prayed up. <clears throat> Some things we can't do ourselves, but God can. Amen. Keep him first. Keep him first and he will fight your battles for you. But you have to stand your ground as well. That's why God gave us a mind and brains and everything else so that we can do certain things for ourselves. Then we've done all we can do, he'll, he'll do the rest. So God bless you. It's also good to see Miss Fish back with us. She's been out for several weeks. She's back now, almost fully healed. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Believe that. Please remain, st oh, please remain standing as today's scripture is reading by Reverend Cassandra Stone, followed by our morning prayer by Deacon Calvin Davis. This morning's scripture reading is Mark 8th chapter, verses 22 through 26. Let us soak in the word of God as we read aloud together. Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand 
and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up, and he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Then he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell anyone in the town. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. All wise, most heavenly Father, once again we stand in your holy presence just to say thank you. We thank you, Father, for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, as we understand that once again you have allowed us to be in the house of praise and worship. We thank you, Father, as you have touched us this morning, allowing the warmth of blood to continue to flow through these veins. And Lord, we just thank you. Understanding, Father God, that you are the one and only true God. You are the true creator of the heavens and earth. So, Father God, we just thank you. We thank you, Father God, for your grace, your mercy. We thank you for your peace, Father God. Only understanding it all is of you. So, Father, as we stand in your presence again, we pray for the ones that are sick among us, Father God. Touch them anyway and just strengthen them. Father, we pray for our youth, Father, that understanding that the devil is at work every day. But, Father God, wrap your loving arms around them, Father God, and just touch them and strengthen them, Father walk this life way of life lord we just thank you we praise you we just give you all the glory and father we pray for our leaders touch them father god in a mighty way so they may understand that you are god and you are one and only god father we pray for our servant who are preparing to bring forth the message touch his spirit touch his heart strengthen him father god as he go forth we pray for the one that have was baptized today as a new spirit began, Father God, in their lives. We pray that you would just touch them and strengthen them, Father. We just thank you. We thank you for all that you have done and what you will continue to do in our lives each and every day. So, Father, just strengthen us and keep us and just allow your Holy Spirit, Father, to be with us today as we go forth. And, Lord, we just pray that you would just touch Oak City, just strengthen us, Father God, so we may continue to be that little light on a hill that will shine bright and th that others may see this little light, Father, and it, that we may glorify your name each and every day. Now, Father, we, we pray that the grace of God continue to bring peace to our lives as we glorify my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, each and every day. We thank you and we praise you in the precious and mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We will now have a spe special selection from the choir, and then the next voice you will hear will be that of Pastor Newkirk. Let us receive him by saying, God bless. God bless. Reverend Newkirk. Reverend Preach Pastor.
I'm gonna hide behind, hide behind that. you 
troubles will have no end. Surely wind don't blow. Will you meet me there? Dumas and the male chorus. We welcome those of you who are joining us by way of television and by way of live streaming. Thank you for being a part of the ministries here at Oak City Baptist Church. Please continue to lift us up when you pray and we'll do the same for you. Our background scriptures come from Mark's Gospel, 8th chapter, verses 22 through 26. I'd like to lift up once again uh, verse 25, and this is the New King James Version. Mark chapter 8 and verse 25. It reads like this. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everything clearly. Our topic for today's message is a second touch. A second touch. The Gospel of Mark is unique among the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John's Gospel is completely different from the other three, wherein in John's Gospel, John focuses on the divine nature of Jesus, how Jesus is not only the son of God, he's also God. He's the second of the Godhead. John shows us that Jesus is unique in that way, that he is fully God. The Gospel of Mark that we have before us today doesn't dwell very much on the life and the genealogy that is the generational background of Jesus, not like Matthew and Luke. Mark looks at the earthly ministry of Jesus, and Mark presents for us a rapid succession of vivid pictures of Jesus in action, almost like a movie theater. He moves from one thing to something else quickly. Jesus' true identity is revealed by what he does and not necessarily by what he says. Mark details for us more than anyone else how Jesus conquers diseases, how Jesus conquers demons, and how he even conquered death. What we see in Mark's gospel is Jesus on the move. Mark is the first one of the four gospels that was written and is also the shortest. I often recommend Mark to new believers. I often recommend the book of Philippians and, the, and also the, the gospel of Mark. And then you can read John and then Matthew and Luke. But Mark gives you a lot in that shortest book of the four Gospels. It's power packed with one miracle after another miracle. Mark is the only Gospel that records this miracle we have before us today of a blind man uh, who couldn't see from birth. He's a blind man who was healed though by a second touch. Is anyone here today who needs a second touch? The first thing we notice about this miracle is that the man's friends brought him to Jesus. It's there in verse 22 of Mark chapter 8 where it says, Then he came to Bethsaida 
and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. The word they represent people who cared enough about this man's condition to bring him to Jesus. I believe only friends would do something like that. Only close friends, friends that really care about you would do something like that. Evidently, this blind man was well thought of by those who chose to help him by getting him to Jesus, the great physician. Do you care enough about your friends to introduce them to Jesus? Think about it. Do you care enough about your friends to introduce them to Jesus? Listen, if you have a friend with a severe need, the best thing you can do for that friend of yours is to introduce him or her to Jesus. That, my brothers and my sisters, is what evangelism is all about. We just finished a study on evangelism, and I'm afraid to ask the question, how many people are beginning to put it into action? The Bible doesn't say that this blind man was even a believer. It doesn't say. It doesn't say he was a leader in his community. It doesn't say whether or not he attended church or whether he went to the local synagogue. The Bible doesn't even say this man was expecting a miracle from Jesus. It simply says he came to Jesus because his friends persuaded him to do so. Amen. What a blessing it is to have one or two real friends, genuine friends. I'm not talking about uh, rainy, day, uh, sunshiny friends. I'm talking about genuine friends. The blind man didn't know Jesus but his friends knew Jesus. The blind man didn't believe in the healing power of Jesus, but his friends believed in Jesus. The blind man couldn't get to Jesus, but his friends could get him to Jesus. If you have one genuine friend, my brothers and my sisters, you are truly blessed. If you only got one, you are blessed. Look at what happens next in our Bible story. It says in verse 23, so he, meaning Jesus, took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. Look at that. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. Why would Jesus do that? Why would he lead the blind man out of town? Couldn't he have healed him right there where he was? Well, you need to know something about the town of Bethsaida. Bethsaida was the birthplace of three of Jesus' 12 disciples. The town was located at the mouth of the Sea of Galilee. It was known as a fisherman's town. The people there were known to be stubborn. Y'all know anybody like that? <laughs> they were not very accepting of the kingdom of God. They didn't accept the advancement of the gospel as it was being preached and developed in that day and time. Bethsaida is the place where the people were not very repentant of their sins. Jesus had to reprimand them in the gospel of Matthew. Listen to what Jesus says to them in Matthew chapter 11. He says, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Bethsaida is a place where Jesus sometimes failed not because of his lack of power, but because of their lack of faith. They would not believe. You know anybody like that? I mean, you've talked to them, you've talked to them, you've encouraged them, you've tried to take them to church, and they just won't believe. They're stubborn that way. The faith, their faith was dead. 
Their religion was cold. The people were stiff-necked, stubborn people. Their prayer altars had been forsaken. They, they didn't see a need to pray any longer. Their situation was almost hopeless. So Jesus leads this blind man outside of town. So the unbelieving people of Bethsaida would have, would have no influence on him. Now I suppose this blind man was very comfortable inside the town of Bethsaida. I mean, this is where he felt safe. This is where he felt secure. This is a place where he could maneuver with his blind condition. He knew the right amount of steps to cross the streets. He knew the exact distance to get to the water fountain. He was in his comfort zone as long as he was in town. But Jesus removes him from town and from his comfort zone. When you come to Jesus with a problem, my brothers and my sisters, when you come with a difficult situation, Sometimes the first thing Jesus does is remove us from our comfort zone. I mean, he may not take you out of town, but he remove you out of your comfort zone. We, we are creatures of habit, and we become accustomed to our surroundings. In church, we like sitting in a certain locale. I mean, maybe on a certain pew. You know? I mean, that's why, that's why I come about the young people today, you know. I love to see them up front because sometimes they like to hang around near the back. And while I'm preaching, they're talking and whispering to one another. Maybe on a certain pew, people like to sit. If the style of worship changes, some people get bent out of shape because we are out of our comfort zone. Listen, listen. Maybe, just maybe, God wants to move us to something a little different. Maybe the healing you've been praying for will come through the worship service. It might even come through the music ministry. What you need may require Jesus taking you from out of, by the hand and taking you and leading you outside of your comfort zone. Listen, my sisters and my brothers. One of the things that makes some people uncomfortable is praising God. I mean, as, as silly as it sounds, some people are uncomfortable. I used to be uncomfortable doing it. Yes. At one time, I was uncomfortable praising God. That's before I really committed my life to the Lord. Well, I know for a fact that we don't praise God enough. We don't do it enough. Right here in Oak City, we don't do it enough. Maybe I don't set the right example. I don't know. But we need to praise God more. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. I know God delights in the praises of his people. I mean, he, a smile comes on his face when we are praising him. When we are giving him the glory, he smiles down upon us. And I believe he blesses those who will praise him. I do know praise will open up prison doors. It did it for Paul and Silas. I do know praise preceded and succeeded a lot of healings. Before people got their healings, they had to praise God. I know praise will make a difference. Don't wait to praise God after you get your healing. Don't wait to praise God after you get your blessing. You praise him even before he touches you. Praise God in the midst of your crisis. If you're in a crisis, give God the praise. Give him the glory. Some things the doctors can't do. Some things you can't do. But God can do it. You praise God in the heat of the battle. If you're in a battle, praise God in the heat of the battle. Don't praise him until the battle is over. You praise him before the battle even starts. You praise God before you see the sun shining. Praise God. Before you see a rainbow in the sky, praise God. Give God the praise. Even when you're outside of your comfort zone, give God the praise. Sometimes you have to forget about self. You have to forget about self and just give God the praise. I don't care how silly I look. I don't care what people say. You can say whatever you want to say. I'm going to give God the praise. 
So Jesus, Jesus wants to take us by the hand and lead us to an unfamiliar place. The blind man was probably wondering, what's going on here? What's going on? Some friends had brought him to Jesus in the town village, and without even saying a word, Jesus didn't say a word. Jesus took, take the, he takes the man by the hand and leads him out of the town. Jesus, Jesus, I don't mean to complain, but where are you taking me? Did you misunderstand, my friends? Did you misunderstand what they told you when they brought me to you? They begged you to touch me, not to take me for a walk. Lord, I need a touch, not a walk. Put yourself in the blind man's place for a moment. In his blindness, he had learned to rely upon his sense of hearing. Yet, Jesus doesn't say a word. Jesus grabs him by the hand and leads him on a walk out of town. He leads him away from the noise of the village. He leads him away from the crowd of people. He leads him away from his familiar surroundings. They begin to walk. The blind man is very uncomfortable with the silence no one saying a thing, very uncomfortable and not knowing where they are going. Jesus doesn't say a word. Some of you are uncomfortable with silence also. You've been begging God to give you direction. You've been begging God to give you a word of guidance. But you won't stay still long enough for God to respond. Some of you may have closed, uh, have chased behind pastors. You've chased behind preachers. You've chased behind other folk, hopping from one church to another church, looking for direction in your life. You've been asking God to answer your prayers. You've been seeking God's face. You've been begging God for guidance. And all the while, there's only silence. Silence. Nothing, no word of prophecy, no word of knowledge, no word of direction, silence. Well, my sisters and my brothers, relax, relax. Jesus just might be leading you to a place outside of your comfort zone, leading you to a place where he wants you to totally trust in him, to trust in him only. Our job is to learn to trust God. Trust him to lead you in the direction you should go. Trust him to guide you where he wants you to be. It may not be comfortable, but it's where God wants you to be. Notice the second part of verse 23, as well as verses 24 and verse 25. It says, and when... He had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him. He asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. After touching the blind man initially, the healing was not complete. Jesus was required to touch him a second time. Most of us today are a lot like that blind man. We are desperately in need of a second touch. Until we receive that second touch, like the blind man, things for us will be out of focus. Not only will things be out of focus, we will be out of focus. We'll find ourselves out of touch oftentimes. We'll find ourselves confused. We'll find ourselves disillusioned. With the second touch from Christ, we can move from strength to uh, we can move from strength to st stress to strength. We can move from grief 
to God's grace. We can move from sorrow to success. My brothers and my sisters, with the second touch, we can move from pride to power. But we need a second touch. This is the only, only recorded miracle in the Bible where Jesus was required to touch somebody more than once. Where he had to touch them more than once to bring about healing. In many cases, he, he didn't have to touch them at all. I mean, he, he didn't have to touch them at all. Think about that. The nobleman's son, the son from Cana in John chapter 4. Think about that. The man with an unclean spirit in the synagogue in, in Mark chapter 1. Think about that. The centurion paralyzed son in, in Capernaum in the book of Matthew chapter 8. The paralytic carried on a mat by four men in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Think about that. The man with the withered hand in the book of Matthew chapter 12. Think about that. The ten lepers in Luke chapter 17. He didn't have to touch them at all. He just spoke the word. Think about that. Lazarus in the book of John chapter 11. All, all others, there are many others. He never had to touch them. He just spoke the word and they were healed. Many other miracles require just one touch. Other times, oftentimes, Jesus would heal people by remote control. If, if, if you would speak the word, his divine power would do the rest. Distance didn't matter. Jesus didn't have to wrestle. He didn't have to wrestle with the wind or the sea to make the sea calm down. He just spoke it, peace, be still. Uh, he, he simply stood there and said to the storm, be still, and the wind calmed down, and the sea began to behave itself. But in spite of Jesus' track record that we see in the Bible, many of us today are still in need of a second touch. Our hearts don't always remain pure. Our minds don't always remain clean. Our actions are not always holy or righteous. We may have started out that way, but somewhere along the way, we have discovered a need for a second touch. Somewhere along the way, our lives have gotten out of focus. We see each other as trees walking. Jesus has to take us by the hand and lead us out of our comfort zone. He has to touch us once and then maybe even touch us a second time. In fact, many of us, many of us will need a second touch. We need it because people ought to look like people. We need it because people ought to look like people and not trees. We need it because things ought to look like things and not trees. If you put lipstick on a pig and tie a ribbon around his neck, he's still a pig. If you put a blatant center in a choir robe or on a preacher's robe, he's still or she's still a blatant center. But if you put a reprobate, if you put a crook, if you put a scoundrel in a position of authority and he or she is still a reprobate, he or she's still a crook. They're still a scoundrel. They're still there because they haven't gotten that second touch. If you put a fool in a million dollar mansion and get, put him in a pink Cadillac, he's still a fool. But God's people ought to look like God's people. And sometimes, sometimes we need a second touch. For all of us are precious in the sight of Almighty God. All of us are blessed by God's goodness. All of us are saved by God's grace. Listen, church, God is no respecter of persons. What he does for one, he can or may do for another. He may choose not to do it, but that's not what I'm talking about. It doesn't mean God can't do it. Jesus touched this man, this blind man, a second time. Christ touched him a second time because he didn't want that man to remain blind. His optic nerves were regenerated. His burdens were rolled away. His life was forever changed. And now, and now, right things look like right things. Wrong things look like wrong things. There was no need to feel his way around any longer. No need to fumble 
and stumble his way through life. The blind man could now look toward a bright future. If you had been there, you might have heard the blind man singing the version, his own version, of Amazing Grace. You might have heard him say, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. All because of a second touch, a second touch. I want you to know somebody said, the first touch gives life, but the second touch gives meaning to your life. The first touch gives you sight, but the second touch will give you insight. The first touch gives you hearing, but the second touch allows you to listen. The first touch leads you to love God, but the second touch leads you to love your neighbor and to love yourself. The first touch might get you in the church, but the second touch will get the church in you. The first touch will make you say, Lord, please help me. But the second touch will make you say, Lord, please use me. Use me for your glory. The first touch will have you pray in your will. But the second touch will be praying God's will. I pray God's will will be done. The first touch will have you reading the word. The second touch will have you living the word. The first touch will have you praying for your friends. The second touch will have you praying for your enemies. Have you ever prayed for your enemies? Lord, help us. Lord, help us to receive a second touch. We need a second touch. The first touch is all right. We need the first touch. But God, some of us need a second touch. I still, I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But I still have some more rivers to cross. And I need a second touch. I don't know about you. But I still have some battles to fight. And I need a second touch. I don't know about you, my brothers and my sisters. But I still have some mountains to climb. I still have some valleys to come out of. I don't know about you, but I need a second touch. Do you need a second touch? Do you need a second touch? I don't know about you, but I need to be justified. Do you need to be justified? I need to be sanctified. Do you need to be sanctified? I need to be purified. Do you need to be purified? I need a second touch. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. He's still in the healing business. He's still touching us. One time, two times, and sometimes even three times. But God will give you that second touch. And before he does, you ought to go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and thank him. Before he even touches you, say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for that second touch. Thank you for that second touch. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There may be someone here today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You're in need of a first touch. And if you have, and if your bet's slidden and gone astray, you might need that second touch to come back into the fold again. If you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, I commend him to you. I commend him to you today. I recommend him to you today. You need to have someone bigger than you are. You need to have a savior, really, because you can't save yourself. The day will come when you can't even get out of bed. The day will come when you can't take a step. The day will come you can't feed yourself. If you keep living, the day will come you're going to need some help. Well, you need a savior. You need someone to save your soul, something that will live forever. And it's your choice on where it will live. If you're looking for a church home, and this branch of Zion feels like the good fit for you, 
feels right, we invite you to come. Let's hook you up with Oak City. Let's get you started serving God, growing in the Lord. Let's get you started in giving your gifts, giving your talent, giving what God has given you with, bless you with. Share it with others. And all of us will be blessed. Stand with me, please. Stand with me. The male chorus is going to give us invita invitational selection. And while they're singing, if there's one, come while the choir sings. Shackled by a heavy burden. Beneath a load of guilt and shame. And then the hand of Jesus, Jesus touched me. Praise the Lord. And now I am no longer the same. He touched me. Praise the Lord. Oh. My Jesus touched me, and oh, oh, the joy that floods my soul. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Something, something happened. And now I know he touched me and he made, made me whole. Sit down and listen to the song. Sit down and listen to the song as he continues to sing. He touched me and all, all the joy that floods my soul. Something Something happened, and now I know He touched me, and He made me whole. Praise the Lord. And He made. our candidates to come up. We're going, we're going to have to give the right hand of fellowship today to new members. Thank you, Brother Mc, Dr. McGregor, Dr. Scott McGregor uh, on the solo part. We're going to ask our new members, anyone who has not received the right hand of fellowship, come up. We're going to give it to you now. Anyone who has not received the right hand of fellowship. This is Chloe Miller, who was, I mentioned earlier, AB student in her school over at Daniels Middle School. Praise the Lord. This is her grandmother. Sister Sellers and Brother Ronnie Johnson. Uh, this morning, this morning we had baptism service at at 8:30, a little bit after 8:30, really. And uh, Brother Johnson and Chloe were baptized this morning. I have their baptismal certificate here, and also uh, their membership certificate for Sister Sellers, Sister Teresa Yvonne Sellers. Uh, and there are several others who have not received right hand fellowship, but they had to be out of town this weekend. But we want to go ahead and provide them the right hand of fellowship. And we're going to move quickly. We're going to ask our deacons, our ministers, if they will follow me. After the ministers, we're going to ask the deacons to follow. And then we're going to ask the deaconesses, if they will follow, and ministers' wives. And then the ushers will allow others to come. Now, don't take time and talk with them. Uh, uh, Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving, okay? 
Now, uh, we're going to ask Brother Scott, uh, Dr. McGregor, if he will give us some marching music as we present them a right hand of fellowship. Welcome them to, to Oak City Baptist Church. God bless you. Bless you.
I'm going to present their certificates to them, and our membership committee will present the Bibles. Deacon Three will take care of that. Chloe, congratulations. Thank you. Sister Sellers, God bless you. Thank you. And Brother Johnson, congratulations. In this thing we call life, um, as you search for truth, guidance, assurance, as you look to find a way, especially find a way to heaven, um, as you look to love one another, to build your faith, and as we are on that road called life, as Deacon Lofton always said, this Bible, this Bible is your roadway to life. Read it, study it, and cherish it. As we prepare to close, let us all stand. Again, while they are here, I'm going to say a prayer uh, as we have the benediction. Uh, did you all have a closing you want to give, uh, Dr. McGregor? We'll ask for that now, the closing, and then we'll have the prayer. Thank you for coming today. May God give you a blessing. Brother Hamilton, it's good to see you. And others who are here, God bless you. Let the church sing. God, we thank you and praise you for this another worship experience. We thank you for these new members of our church family, new disciples who've come, oh God, to be a part of this branch of Zion. We ask your blessings upon them all and upon all of us as we continue on this journey. We thank you for the roadmap they have in the Bible and how they're going to use their gifts to edify this body. We pray now, O oh God, that you might throw your loving arms around each and every one. Remember those on our prayer list, those who are struggling with health illness and ailments. Pray that you might raise them up from their sick beds, that you might heal them with that power that you showed as you gave the blind man a second touch. We pray, O oh God, for healing and deliverance. And now have your way with all of us. Bless our visiting friends who came to be with us. And now, Lord, we give you all praise. All honor and glory. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus, the fellowship and communion of God's Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now henceforth and forever. Let us all sing together. bless you.